you made a video a few years ago where it's just you talking to the camera, going through a difficult time, talking about openly depression and just yeah. feeling just mm-hmm. really down and wanting to reinvent yourself. How did you go about doing that? And what what sparked all of that? Well, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, personal things that happened in, in my life around that time. And uh, that year was very pivotal for me, uh, especially two years ago. Um, you know, my marriage was falling apart. Um, and I mean, a lot of that was like self-inflicted. Um, and, and then I ended up like basically finding somebody else. And it was like my, my life turned upside down, um, in a way that I never, I never thought, uh, it would, you know, I lost friends. Um, but then I gained I gained friends that, you know, I didn't think I would, uh, people that stuck around and understood, um, you know, what, what went on. Um, so I'm very, very grateful to those people. But like in terms of YouTube, what I think, uh, I was doing in, in those times were like, I was just phoning it in and I knew that I was happiest when I was trying to solve problems, when I was trying to find these, you know, the stuff like the P1 and, uh, you know, these, these really big ambitious goals. And I felt like for a while I was just coasting on my past successes and it, it made me guilty because I was very, very driven by guilt and like just in my relationships and in, in general, it's a motivator and it's not, it's not a healthy motivator, but it, it just does help me along. Um, so. It was something where I felt like I wasn't giving my all to my channel. And I, I think people deserve better than they were getting because I felt like I was just phoning it in. And I think that was the the, uh, the start point of me saying, all right, well, it's not me giving up. Uh, I do have something on the horizon that was the, the P1 that I think you guys are going to love and my most ambitious project ever. Um, and I think I needed just to realign myself a l- little bit with that because, you know, there's, I mean, I, I don't want to get into too much, too much detail, but there was, there was a lot in that, in that year that just made me reassess, uh, almost everything in life, whether it's, you know, values and, and the, um, the value of friends, uh, the values of uh, family and who you're close to and relationships and, and everything, you know? Would you be open to talking a little bit more about that? I'm curious what you learned about yourself and about those values. You know, I had a, I had a marriage for quite a long time. How long? Um, for, for about 10 years. And, you know, during that marriage, we had, uh, you know, we had disagreements like, like, uh, like every marriage. But it was very clear at the end that we were de- – we were, very different people. You know, the idea came up that we should go to counseling and that that sort of thing. And it just never happened, mainly because, you know, I, I was told, oh, that this isn't the kind of problem that we need counseling for. It was just kind of like brushed off. And a lot of like the way I felt was like all my uh, my wants and needs weren't really um, taken very seriously. Uh, they were just sort of like, you know, maybe pay some lip service to it. And then and then they just they just go away or, or they're just, you know, uh, I remember once being told that, uh, you know, I, I, I told her I had a really big problem with something. I said, Hey, I'm not happy. I I think we need to fix something. And her immediate reaction was, uh, it's not that bad. You're just making it up. And I'm not trying to paint her in a, in a, in a bad light here because she's not a bad person. She's a very, very, very good mother. Um, but I, I just, that, that's the way I felt in that, in that situation. And, you know, based on that, I ended up, you know, finding somebody else. Um, and it's ne- it's never something I, you know, and this is the first time I ever talked about it. Like, um, I, I found somebody else that was everything that I needed. Like she was, um, compassionate and she was funny and she cared and she felt like it felt like uh you know when we talked she was like present and she actually cared about what i had to say and then i cared about her and we we really connected in a way that i've never connect i I didn't know that it was possible to connect with a person like that and what that did for me was it allowed me to finally put my happiness into the equation because I realized that for 10 years I'd been working, I'd been, you know, just kind of existing, um, through like obligation. Like I felt like things were just happening to me because I'm the man, I'm the breadwinner and and, like things were just, you know, like, this is what you need to do. This is the next part of your life. Uh, get married, have a kid, you know, do this, do that. And then, 
at some point you'll find some happiness, but I, uh, happiness was just like something I shrugged off. I, I, I just felt like other, that was for other people. Once you meet a person like that, you can't unring that bell. I could never know that I was that happy, that I could be that happy with a person like that. And then, and then go back to a relationship where I, I knew that I was going to be unhappy. So like, you know, that's when marriage ended. That's when, you know, and I'm never a person that I, first of all, I'm the, don't take any relationship advice from me ever. Um, but I'm not a person that would ever, you know, have, a woman on the side or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. Um, but this, this just seemed like this was the only way it could happen. Um, so, but I, I know that because of that, people got hurt. Absolutely. And, and I know that it was, uh, it was my fault and I absolutely take all the responsibility in the world for, for what I did to, uh, to people I hurt. But I think that there is something to be said about staying in a relationship that's not good for either people, especially when you're that young, you know, cause you, yeah. you guys are still young. And yeah. so continuing on, on something like that for the rest of your life is yeah. not doing anybody any favors rather than having the parents happy and yeah. living their own lives. And exactly. And, and we had, I mean, we had, uh, me and my ex-wife, we have, we have a daughter and I, I kept on thinking like, is it is it better for us to stay together for the sake of the daughter than it is for us to be apart? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer for this um, because I know parents that have stayed together uh, for the sake of their kids. And for better or worse, like sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I knew that I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to be happy because I knew that if I if I was happy and... I could provide for my daughter because like I was a sole breadwinner and I, I, I made sure that, you know, my, uh, my ex-wife and my daughter are taken care of. They, they have the house, they have, they have every, like she doesn't want for anything. I, I, she knows that she's loved by, uh, both her parents and she sees us and, and, and everything. Um, so like I, I want to show her that there is a life. It might be not, you know, not with both parents together, but both parents love you and the both parents, like you can have uh, examples of working relationships where people love each other and we're all a family and everybody loves everybody. So like that's, I think that was more important for me to show my daughter um, than just staying with her mom out of obligation. I wanted my daughter to grow up in a house where we're not fighting. Um, I think it's very important because that, that, uh, that can give a lot of anxiety. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I don't want, I, I, I grew up in a house where occasionally, you know, my, my mom and dad would fight and I, I realized that it would, and they, they wouldn't like fight physically, but they yeah, were just, yeah, you know, yeah. argument yelling or whatever. And, um, it would affect me. And I knew that it affected me because I remember sitting, I think it was like fifth or sixth grade. And I was sitting in lunch, like with in, in with everybody, like in the cafeteria. And we would have this teacher that would overlook the cafeteria just to make sure the kids weren't, you know, killing each other. And the teacher was like screaming at a kid. And I, I started crying. I should like uncontrollably. I didn't know why. And I was like, I started getting embarrassed. I'm like, why am I why am I doing that? I'm like shaking. And then I'm thinking, like, oh, it's because it's probably because. Um, you know, I have this like response where like, I have this almost like a fight or flight when I hear adults screaming and I can't do anything about it. So maybe it's, maybe it's something like that. I don't want my daughter to, to ever have that. And, you know, right now she is like the happiest kid ever. She's four and like, she goes everywhere. She's like in all the theme parks and she's like the most spoiled kid ever. She loves yeah. going to the pool. She loves hanging out with, with us. And like, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, we just want to show her a world with only love. And, um, and I, I think that that's what we're doing. So yeah. was there a striking difference in the beginning of your relationship with the new person that you're with versus your ex-wife right in the beginning? Yeah. You could 100% tell. Or do you think that, that that striking chemistry with your ex-wife was maybe lost over 10 years no. of marriage? You think that there was an absolute yes. resolute difference? Yes. Well, well, one thing, I mean, when I, when I started off uh, in, in my relationship that would become my marriage, um, that I was 19 when it started. Oh, no. wow. So... I mean, I was a different person. I, I had, I mean, 
Uh, if you think I have anything to offer society right now, then I mean, I had nothing back then. I was living with my parents up until I was 27 uh, or 26. And, you know, it was, um, I was a different person, but then I never felt like it was a, like a, like a real big spark or anything like that. Um, but then again, I didn't know what I wanted. Um, cause you're, you're just, you know, your, your brain's still developing and it just seems like because I've had a experience of having a relationship for so long and I knew what I didn't want in a relationship and it became very abundantly clear to me, especially at the end, um, that this person that, that came along, she was everything that I wanted, like, like literally everything I could, you know, right now we're sitting in this, uh, you know, sitting in my shop, but. I can't wait to get home and talk to her and tell her about my day because she's my best friend, you know, and it, and it sounds stupid and sappy, but like, it's, it's really, you know, I found, I found my person. So I'm curious, what advice would you give your daughter when it comes to relationships? If there's any advice I would ever give to, uh, you know, my son or daughter, I would just say, have somebody that's patient, have somebody that is willing to accept you for the the kind of uh, person you are uh, with all your flaws. How long did it take you to come out of that? uh, depression. It was a quite a few months. I was, um, doing a lot. So I was filming my, my show car Trek with Ed Bullion and, and Tyler, uh, where I was making a YouTube channel. I was doing like a lot of, a lot of things. And then, um, on top of that, you know, we had a newborn baby and then the relationship just wasn't really going anywhere. Like it, it just wasn't doing well at all. And it just seemed like, everything was tough. I'm not complaining because this is, you know, the greatest job in the world. And, you know, I know a lot of people would kill for this position, but, um, there would be times when I got, when, you know, I come to this shop and I see all the cars and the last thing I want to see is a car, you know, cause it just, it's just anxiety. It's just what, what needs to be done next. And to turn a wrench, it's like, you know, it's just like, uh, it's the last thing you want to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it took, it took quite a few months and especially after I moved out, uh, that became easier because I didn't have to, uh, then, you know, live in a house that was, that was, uh, chaotic. Um, but you know, I still went to see my daughter, all that, all that stuff. And even though our relationship didn't, wasn't, you know, good in the end, um, in terms of like a, a husband and wife, I still want to make sure that she's, um, a, a very effective mother cause she's a really good mother, mm -hmm. you know? And that's like the most important thing to me, uh, when it comes to stuff like that. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, after, after that, uh, I, I moved in with my, my girlfriend and, uh, we've been, you know, we've been very, very happy ever since. Yeah. I just want to say, I really appreciate your transparency when it comes to stuff like sure, this. Sure, sure. Yeah. Situations, I'm sure, sure, are like way more complicated and nuanced than some of the viewers might be making them out to be right now. Yeah. But. I mean, to, to be honest, like I want to make, because people are going to speculate and they're going to, they're going to worry about things that have nothing to do with them. But like, I just want to show the broad strokes and show that, you know, if people are in a relationship that they, um, don't feel happy in, it might not be the end of the world to end that relationship. Like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And even if you have, you know, a long standing marriage or kids or whatever, like really think about what that will mean. And sometimes it means staying together. Sometimes it means, Hey, uh, let's talk to each other and say, um, let's get marriage counseling or like, let's, uh, let's, think of uh, some pros and cons, but sometimes you're, you're just not compatible. Like you just realize you've either grown apart or you just never were there to begin with. Uh, there are certain things um, in life where you can't feel like you're just, you're settling on, on some things. Like, uh, you know, if you have a relationship with, uh, with a girl and she, you know, doesn't do this one thing that you think, um, you know, a relationship should have. And then if you, uh, if you bring it up to her, she says, well, that's not important to me. So I don't care. So like, so where do you go from there? You know, you either say to yourself, oh, well, maybe I just, you know, maybe this is just my thing and I have to deal with it. Um, you know, you swallow your pride and then just like go without, uh, or you're just like, all right, well now I had to find somebody else. So like there's, there's no other real option.